to go. Welcome to Life Flow. This is George G. And the time is right. Welcome to today's guest, strong, powerful, Asaf Darash. Asaf, are you ready to do this? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Asaf is a PhD. He is the founder and CEO of RegPack. They're an online registration software that automates the onboarding process. Asaf, I'm excited to have you on. Tell us a little bit about your personal life, some more about your work, and why you do what you do. Okay, so... My personal life, I have two wonderful boys um, that I love very much and have a lot of fun with. Uh, they're only second to my love to my wife. Um, I did my PhD at Berkeley, um, uh, focused on, on how you can create computer systems that have no constants in them, um, which Red Pack is basically an implementation of my dissertation. Um, I... I love to, to do sports. Um, I meditate a lot. Um, my passion is basically programming, even though as a CEO as a company, I don't get a lot of time to do that. But um, I, do, I do make sure that at least one or two days a week, um, I, do, uh, I do code. Um, there's something magical about coding. You, you create something by the very fact that you think it. And I think that's really amazing. And, and it's just it's just really really fun i guess um regarding our uh, reg pack uh, reg pack was founded about nine years ago um and it was restructured uh, about six years ago uh, what we do is we um we enable the best way to to describe reg pack for people to understand it's uh spotify for services Okay, so it's like it allows, and most businesses today are services, so it allows um, various um, camps, courses, um, lawyers, uh, healthcare, um, SaaS companies, uh, software, basically anybody to do the onboarding process and, and bring their clients on board and then enable them to charge them and make sure that um, they're allowed access to the services because they pay. Um, I think the onboarding, the onboarding concept is, is something that exists very strongly in, in the service business. Um, think of it like the only place where you don't go through an onboarding process in order to become a client is maybe retail. You go, you buy a shirt, you're done, right? But anything else that you do, you need to go through a process. You need to give some, some information. You need to sign a contract. You need to, you need to do something. It's not just like, you know, you buy and you go. Um, also, you need to later be able to to use the service. So, so there's a process there. So what RegPack does is it takes care of all of that aspect from, from becoming a client to giving the information to signing the contracts and then billing them um, in the correct way according to what they selected or what the business allowed them to do. I like it. So you had the opportunity, obviously, as, as your as your going through your, your, your master's program, you're getting your PhD to select anything. What, what was it about, about the onboarding process that you saw an opportunity or passion, both? It was both. Um, okay. Well, it, this is a little <laughs> technical. So, so, you know, sure. bear with me. Um, when I did my PhD, I, I, I wanted to see if you can create something that has no constants, that everything's a variable, that everything is, can change, okay? Um, in, computer, in, computer, in computer software and databases and languages, it was never done, okay? So I thought technically it wasn't even possible. Eventually, after many years of research and work and so forth, yes, it's possible, and that, that, what, that is what RegPack is. So you create a system that is extremely flexible. It can do anything, okay? You can create any type of flow that you want based on what you select without creating any, const any constraints for your creation. Think of it like Lego that you can, that you can change the structure of each block, hmm. okay? So I created that. Fine, you know how it works in academia. You create something and you're like, okay, great, throw it out, out the window, right? I, you write an article about it and you don't you ever use it. <laughs> then I said, wait a second, why hasn't this ever been done? Like, why didn't anybody try to do something like this? Isn't there like a need for it? 
And because I was at the university, I talked to my friends, which were working on administration and stuff like that. And suddenly I understood that every administration onboarding or registration or acceptance process is different. And I said, wait a second, this is like a great place to try this out, to see if this works. Because they were all telling me we have applications that either we, we, we took a company to build for us or we built ourselves. Nobody uses, uses the software to do this. And, and then I started looking at the market and I noticed that every single registration or onboarding process is, is unique and is self-made. So I said, you know what? Let's see if this can hold up. It was basically a stress test. And after about a year of working with people, I saw that it was working. It, it could do what people all the, it could do all the crazy stuff people were doing. Um, and if, if until then people would tell me, like, I would find a software that could be 60% of what I want. I would find a software that could find 70% of what I want. Something that was like 100% period, always. So it was like, okay, this is cool. Um, then life, life intervened. Right. And, and um, I, I wanted to basically be a professor. Right. But I wanted to be a professor in the US. My wife wanted to be a professor in Israel. She got a, she got a job at university, Hebrew University before I got a job in the US. So we decided to move. And I said, OK, if we're moving, then I'm not staying in the academia. I'm going to build a company. Now, it took about two years until we actually moved, three years from when we moved from Berkeley back to, to Israel. And at that time, I built RegPack. So it was sort of like a combination of life happens and intellectual interest, I guess. I love it. So you wanted to create something that has no constants. Mm -hmm. Was was there a legitimate moment where 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 you did it, everything clicked? Or what was that like? Uh it was, um, I, I had an amazing mentor, right? Uh, who was from MIT, uh, Roger Harlins. And, and I remember um, I was telling him about the idea and he was, but he told me, um, you know, like go for it, but you should know, like also not being able to find something, that's finding something. Like not being able to do something, that's also doing something. And I, and, and I was like, you know, like a good software dev who's like, no, this is, um, there's no, there's no try, there's do, right? Um, so, so I went out and I tried to do it. And, and I remember one sentence that he told me that, that made everything click. He said, he told me in computers, the only thing that is important is that the world that you create is consistent to its own rules. So as long as you're creating a consistent system, it can work. Even though like, you know, the consistent system can be that, I don't know, every time you eat a grape, you die, right? But that's fine, <laughs> as long as it's consistent. And that changed everything. That, that, that enabled me to actually understand how to build it. It's fascinating, right? You just hear something a little bit different and yeah. that makes all the difference. Totally. <clears throat> and you said something earlier talking about how coding is you're just you're essentially creating something and i'd never thought about it like that but that's 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 pretty cool and if you have that skill which you obviously do then you're able to say okay i get it there's value in pursuing something and then figuring out that it's not doable so i've still done something but you say no i am not interested in just doing that i want to make this thing work and you did and then you start this company, which is a whole nother skill set. And then you turn mm -hmm. your product, your software out into the world. How is it, how has it been received? Tell us about some of the use cases. Okay. So I have no other way to say it except a mixed bag. Okay. We started out by trying to tell people this can do anything. <laughs> as long as you can think it, it can do it. And that was a total fail. Like, <laughs> that was so bad. <laughs> people were like, what? I don't know what to do. It's like giving people a blank piece of paper and telling them, hey, go, go ahead, do this, right? Like, write, write, write anything, right? Write a yeah. story, write a 
of whatever you want, right? It's a blank piece of paper. And people are just like, they sit in front of the blank piece of paper and they're like, oh my God, I don't know what to do, right? But if you, if you give them something to edit or you give them like a structure, suddenly they're like, whoa, I can do this really easily. So, so the, first, the first few months, we, I came, we, I, first I came to like my, my developer friends and they loved it. It was like, oh, great, this is like programming without programming, right? No, I'll, I'll do this as a font. But then you want to go out to business, right? So you got to businesses and they ask you, okay, so what can I do with this? And your answer is anything. And they're like, yeah, sure, whatever, right? <laughs> um, so we understood we need to put people in a box. So we started to segment it. We segmented it to how the application works for courses and how it will work for travel and how it will work for camps and how it will work for or, um, um, events and how it will work for SaaS companies and how it will work for, for doctor's offices and healthcare and so forth. So we actually started segmenting it to verticals. Um, and, and then we found out that we need to talk the specific language of every, every vertical. Because if you talk in, in general language, people are like, okay, this doesn't work. And this, is, this connects very much to how people think about software today. Think of yourself when you're looking for something in the app store or in Google Play. You're looking for, I don't know, like a, a, a huge clock that can be on all the screens. Like you're not looking for a clock. You're looking for something mm. super specific, right? So that's what people do today with business software. So once we started breaking it down to segments, even though it's the same thing, it's exactly the same thing, right? It's the same software. And we even sometimes call it different things, but it's the same software. But then people are like, oh yeah, so this is this was built for my, my need, for my business. Like you were thinking of me when you built it. And you're like, yeah, sure. And then <laughs> totally. it was like, boom. Oh, Suddenly, it, it 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 really really grew really quickly. That's wild, right? But it, it it makes sense. You hand me something, you say, "Oh, this can do anything." I'd be like, "Oh yeah, can it do my laundry?" I'm like, "Oh, maybe not <laughs> yeah. that." But then segmenting it and then using the actual language for each vertical and incorporating the jargon, whatever it might be, that that makes a ton of sense. Is is there a certain size company that it works for? I'm, I'm confident since it does everything, it'd probably serve just about any organization. But what what uh, what is there an industry or a size that's really been the most successful? Or I think normally it needs to be a business that's processing around a million, a minimum of a million or two million dollars. Less than that, it's um, because it is a software that is very flexible and there is a learning curve. If you're like, you know, I don't know, you have clients that you're annually making a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand, even five hundred thousand, it's not worth the effort that you need to go through in order to, to make it happen. But once uh, once you reach that that pain point of a million dollars, right, it becomes worth the effort because it becomes painful. The onboarding becomes painful. And 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 we 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 sometimes see companies that come to us that that process, you know. 20, 25, 30 million dollars. And you're asking them, okay, so how do you do the onboarding process? And they're like, with email? Mm. Like, seriously? Like you onboard thousands of clients through email? And they're like, yeah, that's how we do it. We go back and forth in, with email because they have they don't have anything else. Or they build something that is is unique for them. And then what happens a lot of times is management wants to change something. And they go to the person that built it or or the company that built it. And suddenly they understand that any change that they make is costing them tens of thousands of dollars, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. And also the response time is, is weeks or months. So suddenly they, they, become, they become a very inflexible company, but not because they, don't, they can't think in a different way, but because of the constraints that the software has created for them. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, for an organization like that, what what a breath of fresh air! They must send you holiday cards every year. <laughs> we have you now the biggest thing is that that suddenly the administrative staff um, can do things on their own, and they don't need to go to IT or development. And then what we've seen a lot of times, 
is very interesting where the administrative staff becomes very, very powerful in the organization. And suddenly anything that the that management wants, and especially the, the, um, uh, the CFO and the CEO, anything they want, the administrative staff, their answer is yes, no problem. Yes, no problem. Yes, we'll do it tomorrow. Yes, we'll be ready tomorrow. And then they suddenly become a very, very important part of the company. Whereas before there would be like, you know, just, just crunch the numbers or just crunch the data or just, just bring them in. Makes sense. So how is, how, how is your onboarding process for taking on new clients? <laughs> Obviously we use Redpack. <laughs> um, we, we have either a free trial that you can try out um which which is good if if you're a little technical because you do need to like understand the concepts of, of what you're doing and, and all that um or we actually and again connected to the you know the blank page and all that what we do for most clients is they have a product manager that um that understands their business understands the concepts that they need um understands their needs and then they they build a, a rough draft for them and after that, they go through the concepts with them on something that is very understandable to them because it's their processes. So that way um, they're able to, to pick it up faster. Again, going back to the blank page concept, instead of a blank page, we're giving them something to edit. Um, and when you give some, some, someone something to edit that, that it's theirs, they really enjoy doing that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I know from my experience that people do support what they help to create. So to give them a hand in that process, I think uh, that makes a ton of sense. I love it. Well, Asaf, thank you so much for coming on. Where can people learn more about you? How can they engage with you and Regpack? So um, obviously on our website, it's uh, regpacks.com. Um, we also have a um, nice social media uh, presence. Um I personally also write in Forbes and, and other outlets. Um, but I think that mainly you know, regpacks.com and our blog and um, you know just a follow-up. Excellent. Well, if you enjoyed as much as I did, show us off your appreciation and share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas, go to regpack.com. It's R-E-G-P-A-C-K.com and find out if it is the solution that you are looking for or didn't even know that you were looking for to alleviate a lot of the burden of bringing on your new clients, customers, events, everything. So check it out. Thanks again, Asaf. Thank you. And until next time, remember, do your part by doing your best.